Hello everybody, my name is Troublemaker. And I'm Rangru. And this is another match from the 3v3 Tournament of Glorious Design. Mm -hmm. And today we are playing on the map Gavel, on the NATO side. We have PLF Overdogs with Siki Saki, hi -O, and Judgeman. And for our pack players, we have the Red Chieftains featuring Fidel Castro, Ho Chi Minh, and Nikolai Cesari. Cesari something else. There's, a, there's a, one of those like, little uh, swirly lines in, in his S. Yeah, that is a... C, yeah. Yeah, it should not be... Uh, oh. That's an odd swirly line. I, I did I did uh, one semester of Spanish, horribly, and I was explained that anything with an S-shaped swirly line mm -hmm. makes it sound like an S. But it's all... Hmm. Now, here's so the any thing... Letter. Yeah, here's the thing to me, though, of course. It's like, why not just use S? Mm hmm, because it's already S a swirly line. Does that make it a double S? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> layers upon layers. But, uh, yeah, we're on, on Gavel. It's more of a 4v4 design map, I'll admit. But it does work well for 3v3. A lot of open ground and also a lot of towns spread all around the map. One of my personal favorites. Yeah, for 3v3, there's definitely going to be some empty bases early mm -hmm. on. There's just too much territory to cover. Yeah. There's a lot of ground to take, so I can expect to see some gaps being right open, and maybe some team will exploit that. I mean, PLF has already thrown down their flags and kind of indicated mm -hmm. they're they're not even really going to try and challenge Lima by yeah. looks. You know, they've, they've got mm -hmm. flags down for everything else but it. Yeah. The Lima's usually create a intense point because you have both spawn points right next to it, and well, it's usually just an ATGM roar and trying to reach the little town buildings in the middle. I even when you get those buildings, it's not a particularly great place to stage mm -hmm. a CP. They can just pile helicopters along the side if you're too far north. Uh, if they capture the base of the south, they can get a flanking move. Mm -hmm. Never good. Lima's just hard, one of the hardest spots to take in uh, war game capture zones, I have to admit. And, um, yeah, uh, people setting up their units. And Red Chieftains are, are going, this is, I think, the second game they've done this, maybe the third. Uh, they're using those uh, helicopter commands early on to try and get a, a mm -hmm. few extra points. Yeah, very risky strategy because you can't hide helicopter commands, but they do get to the points a lot more faster. I'm going to guess they're going to try and get a helicopter command into Fox Shot because that is a resupply or reinforcement area, and it's usually good to hold on to them. I, this is kind of a perfect map for those, those hel helo commands because there's really not a lot of places you can hide anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, there's, and those capture zones are just so big. You can be on one side and the enemy could be on another and you won't even see the CV because the distance is so far away. Yes. Indeed. And it should start any time soon. I'm going to be expecting a lot of MIG spam from Pact. Yeah. And we have started. Planes, planes. I don't see it. Really? Planeless openings? This doesn't happen. Oh, never oh, mind. Oh, we have an, we have an SU-7 napalm bomber. Oh, here comes the makes. Oh, yep. <laughs> this is this is just getting ridiculous fast. Mm -hmm. And there's absolutely no air units by PLF, so um, I'm not sure if it's a blunder. They also don't have a ton of AA on the map right now, so let's see how this goes. Yeah, it's a lot. Of planes, napalm being dropped into Lima. Siki Saki has moved a bunch of ATGM Mile and Two Squad in the open. AA, all that good stuff. Nikolai is getting a lot of trucks and also doing the same thing with a lot of ATGM guys in the open into Lima. Does something like Figio Castro is going to get into the Echo Town first. Try to secure Echo. Siki Saki and Hale bringing a lot of units into it as well. Now, as you said, Foxtrot has been captured by the a helicopter, but heading along the southern flank here, Judgeman does have a pretty sizable force of infantry pumping mm -hmm. forward, with a Grizzly CP trying to come in to cancel that point out. Yup, indeed. Indeed, yeah, the semi 24s are probably going to get in range and knock a few of those APCs out. If he can stop and shoot. Oh, yeah, he is going right in. 
The other tracked rapiers are going to have a field day for no man 24s if they stop and shoot at his. Which are not. And they're flying right over. No, they are. They have infantry and they mm. probably have far bigger plans. Mm -hmm. Two point based plans, and that's where they're going for. There's actually nothing to stop him from knocking at this two point base right now. Oh, oh yeah. He's There's so close. <laughs> a cobra coming in. Mm hmm. That's desperation. That is pretty much so. It does see the little Jeep CV. You know, the Cobra might knock out the MI. Yeah, it's going to knock out the MI 24. It does have a better cannon. And sorry, no reigning men today. No <laughs> reigning men. Infantry inside dying a horrible death. Ho Chi Minh moving up a little bit of a spammy tank force into Delta. Higher are having an APC. Are they empty? Yeah, just a bunch of empty foots going to, into Gulf. Try to spot the CV in here. And just a whole force of the. He, this guy loves uh, these these T thirty four eighty fives. He absolutely uh -huh. loves them. Uh, mm -hmm. They're such a super cheap tank, and like one thing they can do pretty well with, not in towns, but in, in general, they can deal with a lot of infantry. Mm -hmm. Very not. Yeah, because it's only ten points. Has a machine gun and a pretty okay cannon, but for ten points, you can't really go wrong. Unless you throw them into the towns, but I mean mm. that's. That's a different issue. That's a different issue. Indeed, indeed. But yeah, just from seeing from their playstyles, there's quite a lot of open ground in between Delta and Echo at the moment. And this is so much ground to cover from both sides. Uh, PLF does have a, a bleed right now on uh, Red, but they Red already has a pretty massive lead, and they're just reacquiring their, their uh, two-point base, and mm -hmm. so they'll uh, probably start removing some of this yep. very soon. It also seems like PLF is going to have control over Fox Shot, which is, I say, the most important point in the match because it allows you for reinforcements. And maybe PLF will continue on the offensive and try to take India. <laughs> yeah, my MI4 CV in India actually having to fly raid because the Fuchs is firing at it with its MG. Oh, God. Uh, this is getting pretty brutal for Red, who have been playing phenomenally up until mm -hmm. this point, and their whole southern flank is pretty well dead right now. Yeah, and uh, they're still fighting quite a bit on the northern flank between Echo and um, yeah, Lima. But yeah, they're kind of in the down point at the moment. Yeah, and uh, these Hilo commands might finally kind of be coming into a uh, problem. And... Uh, uh, these guys, the the oh, I think this is their first match, PLF Overdogs. Mm -hmm. That that's given them a lot of opportunity to kind of look at the matches that these guys have been playing and just figure out like, yeah, he does a helo command here, he does helo command here, he does, he uses this kind of set of units. Yeah, because like Red Chiefs have kind of been sticking to the same tactics throughout the matches. We've been seeing them a lot of cheap units, a lot of cheap units. Haven't seen like a TAT from them at all, and not. And they're actually using the really cheap attack helicopters like MI8 and MI4. It's just such diverse, weirdly tactics using all this cheap stuff. And if they could take a game off of Red, that would be a huge favor to pretty much everybody else in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Has been getting uh, stomped by these guys left and right. Yeah, they have indeed. Bunch of. Slowly ticking away. Mm -hmm. Slowly but surely. Uh, Fidel Castro moving in a bunch of MI2s. I think he's going to try and move them up into Echo, but he's landing them a... No, he's not landing them. He's raiding. What are we going to do with those guys? Going to try and move up into Delta, but Hayo does have it pretty well covered. Bunch of infantry. Yeah, there's a lot of wasteful uh, stuff here that would work against somebody who is really bad. Mm -hmm. uh, they just took a, an AT helicopter all the way across the map to try and pick off a command. And it, as you would expect, it gets picked off by uh, an anti-air unit. They could have easily used that to pick off any of the some 20 vehicles that they have vision of in the south. Because mm -hmm. Awful lot of things down there. Yeah. Hyo moving up a bunch of transports in India. A few of them quite unarmed. 
Yeah, the T-34s and my 4 is going to come in and intercept. Well, they got a Grizzly coming in too, and that's going to knock it at that point for at least a little bit. And now they're pretty well gaining Mega Points mm -hmm. at plus 4 right now. Yeah, that is a lot of points. You're going to catch up to Red in no time, actually overtaking them. Yeah, PLF are definitely in the lead at the moment, and it's quite an interesting turn of events. I was not expect. I was expecting when I when I saw the name on this match. I was like, yeah, yeah, Red's P gonna win. <laughs> PLF is just gonna get stomped, but that is not the case. This is another. Ooh. To be fair though, these guys are also I think final four of Clash of the Clans. Yeah. PLF. So they're not exactly like bad players. It's just from the previous performance, they weren't doing too well. Well, I mean, this has worked out pretty differently. PLF has pretty well pushed every single flank out. Yeah, they're doing quite well, putting pressure in all the areas. And trying to keep the attack out. He managing to capture Lima, which is quite good. And they have an awful lot of units in there to make sure it doesn't get attacked. But yeah, they're just gaining points at a phenomenal rate. If they keep it up for five minutes, they will have the match in the bag. A, a lot of their northern flank has almost entirely been based on luck, though, because uh, uh, Ho Chi Minh has been rallying out these uh, PPK faggots and mm -hmm. also been using the PP. Uh, sorry, F. Anyway, it's a Factoria type rocket. And they've just been missing like mad. Mm hmm. I think it's just one of the like scenarios where this cheap crap unit doesn't work. They don't work in open maps. This is probably why Red isn't doing too well. Because if you look at like Siki Saki up north, he has a Leopard 2A4, ATGM Milan 2s. There's all these really expensive, great units that you get less of. Well, Homie Chin is getting these cheaper Faguchin, Fagatories, and even Cubs. And Cubs aren't entirely great. Yeah, this is hopefully not the. This is hopefully this is the uh, you know not one-sided games. All hopefully we have some competition today. This is yeah. absolutely brutal. Like it's almost close to declaration point mm -hmm. where it's just like there's barely a chance for Red Chipmans to come back right yeah. now. I think the map really killed it for them today. Just always open terrain. Well, in that Ostasun map, Terry Rocks, it was a lot more closer, a lot more where they can get their tanks in, in knife point range and get a good side shot in. Here it's all just ATGMs and ATGMs do win an open field combat. I'm gonna have to pop out for a second. My uh, my girlfriend's flight just got cancelled. She's in Toronto, so I'll I will rejoin you in a second. Okay, I will heed the ship again. So our troublemaker is array. I'm gonna be commentating. Oh, get to the end of the sky. Cobra ever. The so must go on. Cobra is attacking a bunch of MI2s. Fagatories are moving up in the open. Twenty fives up here doing a little bit of strafey strafey action. We have some tanks down here, Leopard 2 and AMX 30 B2. And yeah, it's just a lot of, a lot of stuff. I, I really think at Red Shifton, they're all playing 75 decks. It definitely seems so, because there's no expensive units. They're using T64, A's, Pylons, Coops. Just, it's so alien seeing like a tournament team all go in 75. That usually brings you to such a huge disadvantage because you can't get all the old units out that you usually could. Like MI24 VPs or TATs or T64 BVs. So they really have to rely on all of these cheapy cheap units. Which makes it just odd playstyle. I like it though because I like 75 decks to be honest. All these C34s one of my favourite tanks to use. No joke about yet. And uh, yeah, PLS is running quite well, I have to admit. Do some pretty standard strategies. Mix NATO, Napalm. Does seem like a red shift in Malazan to retake the Echo Town. Which is quite good. Already on to yeah, now PLF only at a plus one advantage at the moment. Slowbots already gaining victory. Can Red keep on moving up? 
and uh, and Rin, which is really aggressive. If they can capture Delta, they can neutralize the point advantage. And heck, there's a big gap between Charlie and Bravo. That's just asking to be moved up in. Maybe they could move through. Yeah, the Sator does have. A, yeah, ever ever our Sator has pretty well covered, but here. This all open train does seem like he's moving a bunch of uh, Spetsnaz and Commandosis <coughs> to see what is going on, what is going on over here. A bunch of Euros being brought out. Really liking the air trucks. Well, I forget they tried to spot CV, but it did end up moving. Yeah, there's a lot of Euros being brought out. Even a PT90. Wow, I don't see this too often. It's like a PT76 with a slightly better gun. And an ATGM, Matuka ATGM. Very cheap, crappy cavalry tank thing. But nonetheless, it can work. Seems like Judgment trying to move up into India. If he could put a CV here or here, he could neutralize the area and um, gain a, quite a good bleed on the enemy. He's Leopard 2's and AMX 30's. This is probably the run time where French tanks are doing absolutely superb. Because the units can't, because the enemy units, you can't even penetrate them. Now yeah, PLF can really just take advantage of the fantastic units that Red Shift and I are using. Just one good old tank pushed through India here, and some AA in the back. Well, nothing's going to be able to touch him. Not even enemy helicopters can't touch him because it's bloody MI4s and MI8Ts or craptastic ATGMs. Up to A4 moving into position. He's going to start shooting at his factories, which are all out of ammo, thankfully, so they can't shoot back. And even if they could shoot back, they couldn't do much damage because their penetration is quite rubbish. And I think Ochi, Min, Nikolai. I just wonder where this uh, Euro Force is going to be going. Might try and attack Delta. That seems like a smart idea. AMX is moving up. I mean, giving them a suppressive fire. East Cannon is actually going to work well against his T-30 Force. If they can just reload, that is. They are panics and shaken, so it's going to be slightly longer. AMX moving up. And PLF going to have very good control over this whole south and side. T-34 is going down to auto cannon. Oh no, they're having to reload. It almost went. They almost went down to auto cannon fire, but only almost. Am I? Oh, that's Jeff around a very good position. Just not shooting now. The helicopters are coming in. Can't shoot Am I too? I think he's just on the move. Yeah, that is probably right. Yep, final T-34 getting finished off. It's not messing with auto cannons. Auto cannon. IKV is being used by Ohio. All eleted. Is he playing an armored deck? I think he might be playing. Where's his, where's his bloody leopard to? Oh, that's weird because these guys are eleted, meaning they kick ass. Long story short, and it is a um, it's a three this kind of cavalry tank. It's not even in tank section. It's at seat in vehicles. Twenty five points. And a pretty good gun, especially when you have them at this high rank. You can just do so much. So much accurate firepower. They actually managed to get a CV into India, giving them a plus three bleed against Red Shifton. Troublemaker is back in the match. Hello. Uh, is it still playing for you? Yeah, I, I had it running. Before. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah. India managed to get captured again. Do you see? Uh. Mm -hmm. And Red actually, oh, if you look in Alpha. Red actually having some Spetsnaz right behind their line. They can maybe spot the enemy CV. It is quite far away. But they're just having this information behind their lines is always quite good. It's a really weird position, though, because usually with these kind of... Even the map's kind of weird for this. With these kind of units, you want to be uh, uh, creeping around the, the edges of cliffs mm -hmm. and in forests. And this map doesn't really have that. Yeah, it's all just open big terrain of a few forests scattered around here and yeah every single unit that gets rallied mm -hmm. out can potentially spot them and you know. kill them and does this one see them no okay no. of course not 
But yeah, just looking at the map, there's absolutely no hills. I just noticed it. Yeah, there's absolutely no hills. It's as flat as Kansas, for Christ's sake. Yeah, I can absolutely imagine if there was a veto feature, Red Chiptons would absolutely veto this one because this yeah. does not fit their playstyle mm -hmm. at all. Indeed. Indeed. PLF still gaining the bleed at, at 462 points. Getting quite a good lead. And they, they probably have this in the bag, to be honest. Unless the red can pull something out. Yeah, there's not many uh, options left mm -hmm. for them right now. They need to... It's still 22 minutes. They'd have to take three a three-point advantage right yeah. now. Yeah. Indeed. Oh, PLF actually regaining their three-point advantage. I do like what they're trying to do in India and in attacking that quite well. Because they, they, they just have the open ground advantage so much, it's not even funny. Like, it's one Leopard 2A4 that they have. It's just decimating everything. Because the best tank patch and field is the T-64A, which is only 55 points and very mediocre. It, it's just so just interesting seeing this battle just unfold. Now, let's see if he'll micro away that, these leopards, or... No, I guess he doesn't need to, because no. oh, he's... Okay. Because it, there's actually nothing here that can challenge those vehicles. Yeah, absolutely. E even, even if they get into range, mm -hmm. it wouldn't matter. The only thing I think that could challenge him in the 75 deck is a MiG-27. Just as block... That's the only, like, MiG-27 you can get the bulk standard run. That could possibly kill a leopard to a forward and run gun run. But yeah, it's a plane and it's pretty expensive. Looks like they're gonna rally some uh, T seventy two Jaguars. Good choice. Uh, they'll have to get into some pretty serious close range advantage to deal with those leopards, mm -hmm. though. Yeah, I believe that's a fifty point. Yeah, I believe that's a fifty point Jaguar, right? not sixty point one. So definitely has to get in close range. And so, yeah, slowly ticking away. Slowly ticking away. Tick tock. The clock won't stop. Both teams kind of the same, uh, uh, same ideas, though. Big open map concept. They played it very differently. Uh, with uh, Red Chieftains, they're playing very heavy on their AT. Lots mm -hmm. of uh, Factorias and lots of Faggots. And mm -hmm. with NATO, they've gone for a lot of heavy tanks. Mm hmm, an awful lot of heavy tanks. And unfortunately, those Faguchin Factorias can't really do much to those heavy tanks because they have pretty poor AP power. Yeah, you need, like, pretty much your entire card's worth to take it at one. Mm-hmm. You need, like, go ahead. Then resupply it, and then take mm -hmm. it another. Yeah, like, for example, that Leopard 2 forward would require a 10 frontal hitch from a Fagatori to kill it. And it gets a lot of hits to kill just one tank. Unless you can get a side shot. You can probably kill it in, like, five. Five or four. That also assumes 100% accuracy, mm -hmm. which... I Never think, happens. Yeah, I think they're at 60% or somewhere around that mm -hmm. area. So they'd need 16, 17 shots. Math <laughs> bad. I think math is yep. bad. Yeah, but an awful lot indeed. And then the open range, like uh, sort range interceptors haven't really been working in first match. NATO hasn't been bringing up much air at all. So these interceptors are kind of just collecting dust during that much. They're going to intercept these harriers, but those are the only things that I've really seen NATO use. Yeah, it's really, uh, if anything, just slowed down the game. They did clear that command from the two-point base, which has been bogging them down the, pretty much the entire game. Yeah. I, I mean, just maybe the map itself isn't appropriate for the tournament because mm -hmm. we're basically at the end of the match, and there's two bases that have not been taken. Yep. One was taken, it's being retaken, but that Delta base just... No, they're both neutralized. Oh. They both have, uh, Echo was neutralized, but Delta is definitely neutralized, so both sides are holding on to it with something, but not all. Sneaky vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's actually Spets and all the rain back in Alpha, spotting the enemy CV at NATO spawn point, but they didn't manage to kill it with their artillery, even though it's just a, yeah, dodged all those sails quite effectively. And Spets and VMF doing a good job. And a uh, little bit of a overreaction, possibly going to move it slightly to a different location. Well, yeah. <laughs> two uh, cobras once again. Those those desperation cobras mm. coming in to try and take it out. Yeah, and the Spetsnaz do go down to Hydra fire, where it's quite effective. 
and anytime soon. We're actually neutral. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I, I thought there was a one point advantage, but I was like, I guess there isn't. The game called me a liar. <laughs> and down in India, T72, some T64s moving off with a bit of a tank puss. Uh, did I kill Leopard Drayful? Is that a leopard or was that.? No, that's an AMX, never mind. Oh, they, they sell their two leopards mm -hmm. down there. Yeah. Oh, SU 24 is coming in from Nikolai. And try to get some seed off. Okay, and like one AMX. Yeah, the SUs really live. Yeah, at this point it's desperation. Uh, mm -hmm. They're moving this base. Really, if they don't kill a command right now, they'll just lose before the attack is mm -hmm. finished. They have a nice ball of tanks. Yeah. They're pretty well armored, these tanks, for the price. It's a good position for them because mm -hmm. there's a lot of blocking area, so these yeah. these leopards can't unload on them the entire time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, what, when the leopards can unload, it's run hit kills all around. And they are just finishing them off slowly, not surely. Okay, I guess that will be this match. Yeah, if it ends. Pretty overwhelmingly uh, underwhelming performance here by the Red Chieftains. Yeah, I will admit. The map really wasn't fair, as we said multiple times. But good job in PLF, yo. Taking advantage of that, I have to say. I'm I mean, just using that. Go ahead. Red Chieftains are... I think they have two wins so far. Yeah. And this will be their first loss. Mm -hmm. So they're still in the lead, kind of. But if since there's 12 teams, if they lose... They have, what, four more losses before they're automatically kicked out, not even possible to get in the finals. I think that's how it works. Yeah, but I think so as well. And uh, yeah, match ended. PLF running out quite outstandingly. Getting goddamn double KD, roughly, once again. Okay, well, yeah. call uh, my girlfriend's boss, tell them that they're not coming to work. So, I'm Troublemaker. <laughs> I'm Rangru. Take it easy.